Be very, very quiet. What do you mean, be quiet? I'm hunting wabbits. Uh, Elmer, we're not hunting Wesley wabbits. We're hunting quail. And I'm going to show you how to fix them. We're the best thing ever. So stick around for me and Elmer eat them. It's quail season. Usually runs in most states from November to part of February. They a delicacy, I promise you. Now, I have hunted a lot of quail. I have eaten a lot of quail. I've looked for ways to cook them that made them even better. I've baked them, barbecued them, fried them, everything else. I like to do a little secret on mine to keep them moist while we grill them. Now, when you grill a piece of quail or anything else that has feathers on it, it's a tendency for it to dry out. I got a little knife here, and we're going to take this. I hope you can see this breastbone right here. We're just going to cut down both sides of that breastbone. As close to you can get it is the best. Just slice it open. Peel that back, that exposes that breastbone. Then we're going to take some good game scissors. Don't use your hair cutting scissors, I promise you, because next time you get a haircut and you go somewhere, bird dogs will be pointing at you because you smell like quail. And just go up there to the top of that wishbone, cut that out. That's what we're going to look like right there. You could wrap them in foil like I say and grill them or bake them or do something like that, but we're going to coat them with flour and our seasoning. It's Red River Ranch. It's good on everything, I promise you. We're just going to take about a cup of flour. And my shooting skills was poor or my bird dog was bad because two quail is all I got this morning when I went hunting. I hear you asking yourself, I thought he said something about grilling it. Why are you going to flour it if you're going to grill it? This flour is going to help seal in some of that moisture of that quail. We're going to fry him in a little hot grease just to brown him a little. Then we're going to take him out, let him cool, and we'll show you what else we got in the store. Folks, we got this cast iron skillet on here preheating a little grease. Might have been a little bacon grease. How much? Hey, about that much. Just enough to sort of cover the bottom of that and give it just a little for these quail to rest in. We're going to make sure it's good and hot. And to do that, we're just going to check it with a little flour. Oh, it's sizzling. I think you maybe can see it. So it is good to go. Oh, yeah, I like to see that sizzle. And we're just going to let them brown on both sides. Then we're going to take them out, let them cool. So I want to check and see if there's a little browning taking place. And you can see there is. So we're going to go ahead and turn them over. Like I say, we're not cooking them done. I just want to see that quail begin to brown. Then we're going to take them out of there and go to the next step. About two minutes aside, you'll be pretty close. As you can see, we browned it on that side, we browned it on that side. That's all we're after. We're going to put these in a place to cool, let them cool enough that we can handle them. A little cream cheese. Cool that apart a little. Stuff that cream cheese down in there. A little or as much as you want. A jalapeno. And then we're just going to wrap it with a piece of bacon, which takes about a half a piece. But you can see they're a little springy. Just get them wrapped as tight as you can. Pin them with a toothpick, and we'll do that oven. And it's better if that cream cheese is softened. And you can see we got help from the beagle. He's always making, you're a rabbit dog, not a bird dog. And we're ready to go to fire. All right, folks, same old thing takes place. If you can hold it less than five seconds, I'd say it's about right. Five second rule, too long, it ain't hot enough. We're good and hot. Take them two birds. Set them flat side down on the backbone first. We're going to let them cook. We're going to brown them up good. Roll them around once or twice to get it all even. Then we'll top them again, we will. Flip them over. You can see that bacon and them quail beginning to crisp up a little. That's what we're after. But we got to cook these even all the way around. So there'll come a time where you may have to turn them on their side just a little. But what does bacon do if you just leave it out here too long, that grease dripping down on that fire just makes more fire. So that's why we do this at the last. The quail is nearly finished time we get them on there. We don't have to get nothing really done but crisp up the quail and the bacon. It don't take long. This here feller here 
is helping hold this one up on the side since I was a poor hunter and ain't got but two quail. Usually you can sort of rotate them all around where the buddy is helping somebody else get the other side brown. It's like a going to the swimming pool and getting somebody to rub lotion on the other side. Out got there, we got us some good barbecue sauce. Now you could have put this on there earlier and when you started and kept basting and go ahead and burn it off because this stuff got sugar in it. That's what it wants to do. So this is the finishing step. We're just going to do it right here at the last. Give them a good coating. We'll get that stuff to caramelize on these babies. It'll be like candy. And let it go about a minute each side. Just for a finishing touch, we're going to give it just a little glaze in here. And you can use whatever kind of sauce you want. This is sort of a sweet and spicy. Let them cool just a minute because they're going to burn, stick to the roof of your mouth. But when you take that breastbone out, you got two really good bites there that you ain't got to worry about no bone. Now remember, there is some bone right at the front and under the back. Ooh, this is mm. 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 Pardon me, but ain't bad manners. That's good food right there. See that? Cream cheese, quail good and still and moist and tender. Mm. Get your gun. You need a bar of beagle dog to hunt with, or old Frank, hey, call us, we'll rent them out to you and you can go hunt something. But be careful, because Frank really likes to pee on a post more than he likes to hunt. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for dropping by.